Hi, it's me. <laughs> I'm all excited because today, um, after being a couple, couple, about a couple weeks, more like three weeks without my piano, I've got my piano back. Okay, so what this video is going to be about is how I got my first grand piano, um, a little bit story behind my piano. <laughs> okay, so anyways, the reason why I was without my piano for a little while was because of, um, the course for because of the foreclosure on the house that I was living in, which is technically my house, but it was owned by my parents and we were renters. And so my piano was displaced at my parents' house for a little while until we got settled. And then to move the piano was kind of expensive. Um, just to move the piano when I had to get it out of the house really quick was two twenty five. And again, to move this piano again, it was two twenty five. Um, so it was a, a nice little <laughs> chunk, <laughs> but anyway. So my my a little back history is my my grandmother was a piano teacher, and my aunt in California is a piano teacher. And from the time that I was five years old, whether I wanted to or not, I was taking piano lessons. <laughs> and I actually taught there for a while myself. Um, I enjoy teaching, but. Um, which is a whole other story. Parents are flakes and they don't treat it like a real business. So when it comes time to pay or if they don't show for a lesson, they don't expect to pay for it. That's a whole other soapbox, so we won't even go there. So um, my first piano teacher was a teenage girl. She was about 16, 17, and she taught me until she graduated from high school and went off to college. Her name was Cindy Law. And how I cannot remember the life of me, my second piano teacher's name, is beyond me because I was most devastated when she shipped me off to my last piano teacher, who was Wanda Watson, and she was a certified pianist, so a certified piano teacher in the Southern Nevada Music Teachers Association, and I was with her until I turned 18. Well, <laughs> when they shipped me off to Mrs. Wasden, she had this beautiful Steinway eight-foot grand piano. And if you know anything about pianos, Steinways are the top of the line to die for. So here I am from about 10 until about 18 playing on this Steinway. And my very first piano my dad bought out of the Nifty Nickel, and it was just an upright piano they got for like $500. My mom was like, well, it's time to go get a new piano. So this is where Southern Nevada Music Store comes into play, and they've been around since 1958. So I don't know which one of the three sisters from Southern Nevada Music um, sold me my first piano. But, so this is the whole idea. My mom and I go to the music store. She goes, okay, well... Play this upright and play the upright to upright. It's really nice. Okay, there's nothing wrong with the upright. And then she's like, okay, well, go ahead and, and play on one of those grand pianos. And that's when they had first come out with the Young Chang, which was like somewhat affordable as a grand piano for the everyday Joe type thing. <laughs> so I started playing this grand piano. And she's like, okay, this is the deal. When we bring your dad to the piano store, you play this grand, but then you come back over here to this upright and show them how great the upright plays. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't take a kid who is now accustomed to going to a weekly piano lesson and playing on a Steinway, eight foot, and tell her to play an upright and then try to pull the wool over her dad's eyes with a young chain grand. <laughs> no, that backfired on her. <laughs> So, Dad comes to the music store, I play the upright, then I go to the young chain, and I go, yeah, Dad, the upright was great, it sounds good, listen to this, okay? So, I'm sitting here playing this young chain and just having all kinds of fun, and he's like, really, like, I'm like, oh my goodness, now get, mind you, you could not get me to practice to save my life, I hated practicing, when it would come time for taking the test, Mrs. Wazen would pull her hair out because I would not practice my song. I'd be learning my song for months. I'd be playing the sonata for months, and she'd be getting mad at me, totally mad at me. And then, two weeks before my test, I'm like in there slamming it hard, and come back, and she's just looking at me, wanting to choke me out. I know she wanted to choke me out. Mind you, she's this 
tiny little elderly red-headed woman, and so she really wanted to, to beat me sometimes, I know she did. Um, I'm probably one of her biggest disappointments. But anyways, um, back to the piano story. So what happened with that was I just told my dad, it doesn't sound so much better. I promise I'll practice all the time. I'll play all the time. I'll whatever. But yeah, I walked out with my young chain grand piano. It wasn't as big as Mrs. Watson's Steinway 8 foot. And it wasn't a Steinway, but it was a grand piano. So... That's how I got that, and yes, the mom was really mad at me for a while. I was in her doghouse, and, and if any of you know my mom, she's about five foot, petite little Mexican woman, and she is honoring. <laughs> I have tons of fun stories about her. But yeah, I paid for that um, little, what's the word for that? I totally, totally do her for a loop on that one. So, um, anyways, so I'm now happy to have my piano back in the house, and that's the story behind that. Um, the reason why I'm making this video besides telling you that story and vlog content, I'm doing the ultimate vlog challenge, and also I have it as a goal to start as soon as um, <clears throat> the winter vacation is over. I have a seven-year-old that I need to start teaching, and I also have a 13-year-old that um, is ready to start and we'll just see how it goes because teaching your kids sometimes is just not the best idea. So anyways, I will chat with you all later. This is just a really quick video to say I'm a happy girl. I got my piano back and um, my kids would tell me not to do that again ever. <laughs> that was my dad. Okay, so since I'm sitting here anyways, recap on day five of the 17 day diet. I don't know what I did, but I think it just might not be even what I did. I think um, the quick amount of weight that I lost in those five days, my body's just kind of stabilizing. So I'm up two ounces. So now I'm 143.6. So I, um, I, one, I had to be up at six because they were moving the piano between seven and nine which is not the normal time that I weigh because everybody knows I don't like to get up before 6, um, actually 8 o'clock. If I have to get up before that, I'm like, ooh, grouchy. Um, the other, so, so that's one thing. I know you're supposed to weigh at the same time every day. Um, so I'm not too stressed about that, but yeah. So, and then that's the other thing too with weighing yourself every day, but I'm weighing myself every day too just so that I have um, a good track record of what I'm doing. So I'm not upset over who, which is technically I should be now that I'm adding that up. No, no, no. It's only, is it six ounces or is it eight ounces? Hmm. I don't know. But I think my body's just stabilizing because 4.8 pounds is not a lot to lose within that best time frame. And that's when we actually began on a diet for four full days, and this is the morning of the fifth day. So, all right, I will talk to you all later. Have a great day. Bye.